Hey, hey, good morning, good morning, good morning. We are live. It is Swahili Sunday. And I am excited to be here today because we are talking about the importance of having fun, which is our final Go Pink rule of engagement. And uh, I'm really excited to share about that today because the importance of having fun in your life uh, can't be just tossed off to the side. Too many people uh, one of the go pink rules that we talked about was take positive action towards your goals and dreams and, and having that goal setting statement and setting that end step and then having the celebration after you achieve your goal. That's part of having fun. Have the fun by celebrating. Too many people go towards a goal and they just keep on going and they never celebrate and they never take time to have fun and then they get worn out, they get burned out and they end up sick or they end up, I know if I don't take some time out, my body will just be like, hey, okay, we're shutting down and you're going to go lay on the couch. And that's not a lot of fun. I'd rather be out riding my Harley or uh, walking the dog or going to dog training or doing something. So I, yeah, that, so we're going to talk about that today. But before we talk about that, I want to feature a couple of products because I haven't done that lately. If you have a dog you want to make sure you get a dog bandana. Look at this. We also, and I'm going to show one of the sets. We also had a table runner set out of this that sold. So I'm going to order some more table runner sets uh, out, out of this pattern because it, a lot of people were looking at it at an outdoor fair. And with the holiday season coming up, I want to have a few of those on hand to sell. Anyway, but we have dog bandanas in all different fabrics and all different colors. This just happens to be one. I have one set of these, but I'm going to get more and it's a small, medium, large and extra large. And you can look on the website at basketsandbeatskenya.com and see the measurements. The measurements are also in the hang tag because these are, uh, I have them in the store in Fairtrade Long Beach. So this small one fits around Indigo, who's still a puppy right now. I have to tie it back around her and take a photo uh, of, of her with it so I can display the small one. Anyway, they're, they're, they're machine washable. There's a lot of different colors. Some are made out of the, the soft cotton fabric uh, that I got in Kenya and we made there while I was there in June. Some of them are made out of the wax print which have a sheen to them. Some of them are double-sided. Uh, this one is the same on both sides but some of them have like a solid color on one side and a and then there's one that has uh, different uh, colors of the same color scheme, uh, one on each side. So it's it's reversible. So go get yourself a doggy bandana at basketsandbeatskenya.com. But I also wanted to show one of the, so we made three table runner sets. And uh, with the holidays coming up and people getting back into having people over, people may be interested in spicing up their table again. And so, I, like I said, one of the sets was this. If you're interested in this, I'm going to order some more of this table runners out of this set. So it's a table runner, uh, four placemats, uh, four napkins. And if you're interested in that, you can PM me or send an email to Eldana at basketsandbeatskenya.com. I can take pre-orders on, on table runners out of this. I have to, I have to, send that order and get the lady started on that. But this is one of the other fabrics. This Layla picked this fabric. I thought it was so beautiful. Uh, gray is a big uh, color now for people's interiors. People are painting their walls gray and doing other things. So this has a gray kind of a hue to it, but it also has a really pretty orange and red. And uh, the, the fabric is just really so vibrant and beautiful. So there's there's four, I think this one had an extra. Is this one that had an extra one, two? Yeah, this one has an extra. There's supposed to be four, but we had enough fabric. They made an extra uh, napkin. So you could add the four place settings and then this to cover bread or something on your table. And uh, so there's four, there's four napkins. There's four placemats and they're all slightly different because of the way the fabric runs through. You can see they're, they're similar, but um, a little bit different with the way the fabric runs through. So there's four placemats and then there's one standard table runner. And you can see the, the measurements at basketsandbeadskenya.com. 
So this is the table runner. And it's just beautiful. It, I just, this fabric is so pretty. But one thing we did, we had our soapstone vendor that we uh, work with create these beautiful little napkin holders and they have the pattern carved in them that is on, on the napkins. You can see the pattern. So what you would do is you would set your, your place up and you would put the, the napkin in the napkin holder and set it, set it like that. So it, this is made out of soapstone. So that comes with it. So it's a full set. So this one's available on the website. There's only one. This is a test. We're testing to see how the different colors and fabrics go. So if you're interested in, the, in this, go check it out at basketsandbeadskenya.com. Dot com right here, basketsandbeadskenya.com and get your one of a kind set. And I have another set I'm going to put up this week. We have, so like I said, I brought back three to test them to see how they would go. And uh, this one, like I said, sold pretty quick. And uh, so I'm going to be getting some more of those. And uh, yeah, this would look great on somebody's table that has these type of accent colors. And they're all machine washable, machine dryable. I mean, the colors are vibrant. I wouldn't, I would dry it on very low settings so it doesn't fade the color too much um, because that's, you know, heavy heat does that to, to fabric. But then, and then you also get the four of these that comes with it. So check that out at basketsandbeatskenya.com. I just wanted to feature a product this morning before we got into our discussion about having fun. Oh my gosh. Why is it important to have fun? Okay. So fun, uh, Furahara is fun in Swahili. And the, the importance of having fun, why is that a big deal? Do you, you see a lot of people that are, are, gosh, they just get burned out, especially with COVID. I'm not sure what you did to have fun during COVID, I went for a lot of walks in the neighborhood there were, because you couldn't go anywhere. You couldn't even go to the beach. You couldn't go on the beach. And that was really hard. I remember one time going and walking to the stairs. It was blocked off and just listening to the ocean so I could at least hear it. And uh, it's having, having, being able to do that at least was um, something that, that was, uh, it helped me. And, but during COVID, I did things like gardening. I was working in my garden. And because places like like Home Depot and Lowe's were still open, I could go get some dirt or extra plants or whatever in pots. And so I worked in my garden some. And then I did some artwork. I have one of those um, those coloring, those books that you colored. The, the uh, I guess you call them adult coloring books. I don't know. But I was, I did a lot of artwork. I, I read some, um, but I had to do some creative things to be able to enjoy, to still have fun. But now that, that things are sort of moving in a direction, I mean, it's sort of ebbing and flowing. We're, we're here in California, we're able to do uh, things again, like go to restaurants and go to the beach and all that kind of stuff. So that, and I think it's really good that today was the day I'm talking about having fun because you may see I'm wearing an NFL jersey. See, it says NFL. This is a Des Bryant jersey. I'm a Dallas Cowboys fan. Go Cowboys. Yes. So I'm going to the Cowboys game today. No, not the Chargers game. It is here in LA at SoFi Stadium, which is the home of the Chargers. But to me, it's the Cowboys game. And my son and I are going and I'm so looking forward to it. We are going to have some fun. We'll probably get booed by people that are Chargers fans. Because I remember when he and I went to a game, one of the things we used to do before COVID, once a year, we did it for three different years, was we would go on Thanksgiving. We would fly out Wednesday night, go to the game on Thursday, fly back Friday morning, and make a, a an event out of it, just going to the I, – I saved up my points on my Amex card and – and uh, use sky miles for the ticket for the flight and so we flew to we flew there and we flew back and one time my daughter went and she's she's certainly not a cowboys fan so she it was against the chargers too and she was wearing a chargers jersey and she said when in dallas root for the other team boo marissa boo <laughs> 
but I'm excited because I'm going to go have some fun. So what are you doing to have fun? Maybe you can't do something like that, but what do you enjoy? You have to include that in your life. You have to have to move it into your week. You have to make sure that you do some kind of thing to have fun, to relax, to detach. There's so much, and I'm still somebody who I, I, watch as little media as possible. I follow some stories just to see what's happening, but there's so much negativity out there and there's so much things that are draining people. I mean, I'm working two jobs, basically. I'm working a corporate job to pay the, the uh, business expenses to get back to a, a level of sustainability for the baskets and beads business and, and speaking. So those things are it, so I'm working two jobs and I, I discovered something that I was saying and I, I'm like, oh, I got to, you have to watch your language. This is another thing. You have to watch your language. You have to watch what you say. The, the Bible says the power of life and death is in the tongue. So when you start saying things, you can, you can tear somebody up with your words. You can lift, lift somebody up with, tear somebody down with your words, lift somebody up with your words. And what are your words doing to yourself? I've always cited one of my favorite proverbs. I think I still have it here in the banners. Do I, do I? No, I think I might've taken it down. It's Proverbs 16, 24. Kind words are like honey, sweet to the soul and healthy for the body. And if you say unkind words to yourself, you can tear yourself down. And I found that I was saying, oh, this job's killing me. I'm so tired, I'm exhausted. And I was wondering why I was exhausted all the time. It's because I'm telling myself I'm tired and exhausted. I'm like, I gotta stop saying that and switch it to I'm energized, I'm awake, I'm healthy, I'm uh, alert, I'm focused, whatever. I feel great. I'm healthy. Uh, all those type of things. I'm healthy. I'm healthy. I'm healthy. And uh, I I noticed that I I've switched up the way I feel by saying that. Now, obviously, if I got sick or something, that that would run me down or whatever. But to sit there and say every day, I'm exhausted. I'm tired. It's wearing this job's wearing me out. Oh my gosh, I'm perpetrating the fact to tell my body that, oh, you're tired. You need to act that way. So I had to switch my words. And then I was realizing I wasn't inserting enough fun in my life. I mean, I enjoy going to doing the outdoor events and going to do different events and, and such, but I was not doing enough fun things for myself. And it's so, so, so important to interject some fun. That's why have fun is the fifth go pink rule of engagement that you need to insert into your life. You have to make sure that you have some fun. So I'm going to have some fun today going to the Cowboys game. Yeah. Go Cowboys. And it was, so what are you passionate about? I'm also passionate about riding my Harley. I love to get on my Harley and go. And I wasn't able to for a good long time because of my wrist, because of my back. And I thought maybe I would never ride again, but uh, I'm so grateful that that is healed. And uh, people, you know, I have the I have the little puppy indigo, indigo, go, go. She's either indigo or into stop. She doesn't have anything in between. She's always going. But that's the Malinois Shepherd for you. So they're they're a little uh, energetic. And I'm going to be celebrating on. Thursday when she gets her last set of shots, I've been, I'm, I just wanted to wait before I took her to the dog park because there's so many dogs there and there's that, that she didn't pick up any, that she was fully vaccinated for her, for rabies and all that stuff that she didn't um, pick up anything because puppies, their immune systems aren't quite kicked in yet. So they need that extra protection. So I did not want to take her to the dog park bark the dog park or the dog beach until such time as she was a little bit older and i'm kind of going crazy because she's got a lot of energy and she needs to run and she likes to play with other dogs and when when gracie was here her sibling i guess from the litter before her they would play and play and play and they're gracie's not here so she has no one to play with in the house and uh, it's kind of making her sad, I think. So I'm excited that today she's going to get to go play with uh, Gracie. And um, then my son and I are going to the game. So Indigo is going to get to have fun too. But um, I say that about Indigo. By the way, if you are on 
Instagram, follow Indigo Malinois. She has her own Instagram page. And the last video I put up was her with a little puppy snore. It was so cute. But I've been having fun. And actually, I dropped some pounds kind of unintentionally. Wasn't thinking about it. I, I had gained a little bit over COVID. I guess you call it COVID weight. Uh, and I walking her so much, I noticed one day I was like, wow, these clothes are kind of loose. And I had had dropped a little or released a little weight. I like to say released because that means it won't find me again. And the walking is doing me good. The The walking is helping. I, I, I'm walking her sometimes five times a day. And I, I have sometimes I don't always take my phone. I need to do that to kind of count my steps. But uh, yeah, she we go out in the morning and then we go out because she's still a puppy and she has to she can't hold it as long. And she's one of these dogs that just wants to go, oh, I got to go potty. I'm just I'm not going to tell you. I'm just going to get up and go over here and go. I mean, it's that quick. She'll be on the couch to sleep. She'll jump up and walk across the room and pee. I'm like, what are you kidding me? But I've been having fun with her. So she's interjected a level of daily fun in my life. Although there is some frustration too, because she's, you know, chewing stuff and she's in the, the teething stage and all that kind of stuff. But I've, the, the fact that I got a dog and I hadn't, I, I had, we had our chocolate lab for almost 14 years and she, she, as they say, cross the rainbow bridge, but she passed away in 2013 and I've had the two cats, but I haven't had a dog since then. And I, th I was traveling a lot with speaking and I thought it just wasn't fair to a dog. And, and then my son got Gracie, a Malinois shepherd who's big girl now. And then I got, I was like, when he was moving out, he came and stayed with me for a few months. And when he was moving out, I thought, mm, it's going to be a little lonely around here. Because when he was at work, Gracie would be here at home with me. Now she's barking. Indigo, Indigo, settle. Come here. Come here. Good girl. Good girl. You want to say it? Indigo, come here. Indigo. Indigo. Hey, I know you know your name. Indigo. Oh, she's going after a fly. Um, I just felt that I wanted to have a dog. And we've just started training this week. When I say training, we're not training her, we're training me. That's that's the thing about, I mean, dogs are ready to listen. You just need to know how to give them the right command. So um, that's have adding a level of fun into my life too. So what level of fun are you in, inserting into your life? What are you able to start doing again that you couldn't do before? What kind of things do you enjoy? Do you enjoy camping? Do you enjoy traveling, which has been, I, I enjoy traveling. And the fact that I was able to go to Kenya in June, I was so excited. And uh, I, I'm traveling to a conference the end of this month, praying it still holds. There was another conference that was supposed to be the following week and it canceled, but um, it's, eh, it's still hit or miss. So things are still not a hundred percent back to normal, but things are better than they were. And it's time if you haven't to get out and make sure that you interject some fun in your life. Even if it's the for, for me here in SoCal, I can go down to the beach and sit there. Uh, as soon as Indigo gets her shots on Thursday, we'll be able to go to the dog beach in Huntington Beach because there's a whole ton of dogs there and you can just let them go. And I love being by the water anyway which is one of the reasons when I think about, oh gosh, you know, a lot of people are leaving California and I'm like, wow, do I want to leave? I actually had a job offer in uh, Austin, Texas. I'm not, it, the offer hadn't, it, they were asking me if I was interested in being offered a, a job. And uh, I was, you know, I'm from Texas. I was stationed in Austin nine years. Austin's a great town, but I thought, hmm, do I want to leave the the beach for that? No. I uh, it's expensive here. I hate the cost of everything here. Like gas is ridiculous. We're taxed upon taxed upon taxed on gas. I think it's almost five dollars a gallon, which is ridiculous. As soon as you cross into Nevada or Arizona, it cuts in half basically. 
So I, a lot of times I go on base uh, when I can on the base to get gas because it's usually about 12 to 20 cents a gallon cheaper. And everything's so expensive, but then you go and sit at the beach and just it's just down the street. And it's um, I certainly don't take it for granted, but I don't get to go there enough. But but when COVID happened and I couldn't go just sit and listen to the waves and put my feet in the water, that really that was hard because I didn't realize how much I really enjoyed that. And I had to find other ways to have fun while COVID was going on. But right now, Hey, I'm going to a football game and I am a big football fan. I've been a Cowboys fan since I was a little kid. My father used to watch the Cowboys game and I would watch it with him. And I had a, I had a scrapbook for three years and I still have it somewhere in my storage where I took all the, newspaper clippings from the games in that were going on and I'd write a little thing about it and and it was a it was a lot of fun and I've been a football fan ever since so um, really looking forward to a good game today Cowboys played a good game last week against Tampa they got robbed but hey you know that it was close game. So I'm, I'm thinking that today's game is going to be a good game and it's just, I'm spending time with my son. I'm going to be uh, having some fun. I'm going to be out and about and doing things that I enjoy. So what do you enjoy? I'd love to see you put it in the comments, what you enjoy, what you're going to be doing or inserting into your life or things that you, uh, you haven't done and maybe want to do. What, what fun thing that do you want to do that you're looking forward to? Maybe you have a trip planned. Maybe you are having a get together with a group or something, or maybe you're going to a football game or you're going to, you're going camping or you're going traveling somewhere, or you're just simply going to get in your garden and dig things up or whatever you're going to do. Love to hear about that in the comments. But the important thing is you must interject fun into your life. If you do not, you're going to burn out. There, there's all work and no play makes you dull, unhappy, and exhausted. So I highly encourage you to insert some fun in your life. Watch the social media page because I'll be posting something about uh, the game going to uh, going to the game. And this is a previous Swahili word for furaha, which means happy. So I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to have fun. I'm going to be happy. And I, I'm just excited. So I think it, it means it's, it's basically the same word. Furaha must mean fun and happy. It, it's it's a, a an emotion, um, an emotion, a way of being. So I hope that you're doing something fun today. If not today, that you have something planned for the week. And again, put it in the comments. I would love to hear what fun that you have had, are having, or plan on having in the near future. So I have to get ready to uh, go. I'm going to go meet my son. We're going to let the dogs play. Then we're going to go have some chow and go to, hey, that's a military way of saying things, chow. It's still chow. It's still, it's still the chow hall. I have a little funny before I go. So the, when, I came, when I joined the military, the dining facility was called the chow hall. And I guess somewhere... In the, the first few, I was, this must have been, this must have been, I was in six or seven years by this point, and we had an, we had an exercise, and I guess the chow hall, they didn't like it being called the chow hall anymore, so they were attempting to uh, put a change in about that, and I, I called over to the chow hall to see if they were open. We had an exercise, and what usually happens is you get recalled. You go into the exercise at 6 a.m. You don't hear anything until maybe 8, 9 a.m., like which shift you're on or what job. You're, you know, I, I knew what my job was, but which shift I was on. And if it was a day shift, I had to go report. If it was a night shift, I went home and then came back. And usually I was on the day shift. So I, I so we'd all show up at the office and then we'd go to the chow hall. And I was like, oh, let me see if the chow hall's open. So I call over there. And they said something on the phone. And I said, is this the chow hall? And they're like, no, this is the Cy Wilson enlisted dining facility. I said, okay, we'll be over there. 
I guess they didn't want it to be called the chow hall anymore. But me, old school military is still the chow hall to me. So I think now they call it the, the defect dining facility. So uh, it's still chow hall. Anyway, so we're going to go have some chow. And then we're going to go see the game. So I'm looking forward to having fun today. Hope you are too. Have it. Have a great day. Make it a great day. Not good.